Hello and welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear View Podcast. This is episode 187. On this show, we strive to showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else that gun enthusiasts may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Cross, from the Firearms Radio Network, your source of broadcast for shooters, hunters, and all things firearms related. Uh, so we got another full house this week. We got Sean and Tony, as well as Chad, Rob, and Zane. How's it going, guys? Fantastic. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Yeah, Welcome back, Zane. Fantastic. Zane joined us for the second time in a row, so we haven't scared him off yet. Sucker. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good to be here. He's psychotic. Or he just, <laughs> just punished me, one of the two. I guess the second one, the second one maybe. I don't know. Oh, he's a glutton for punishment. That works. So starting wow. off the uh, the show like we usually do, let's uh, go around the table and ask what everyone did in guns this week. Starting with uh, Sean. Uh, it's been more anti-gun than gun stuff, actually. Um, armor came in today from Veterans Manufacturing, uh, so I've got a couple of their lightweight uh, mobile slash vehicle shields and some soft body armor and some hard body armor. So stuff to, to stop guns, not so much the guns themselves. And we're gearing up for critical self aid at the end of the month on the 25th, which again is one of those life saving courses, not necessarily um, how to stop a threat, but how to keep yourself alive should the worst happen. Cool. All right. How about you, uh, Chad? Cutting out, so leave me out for a minute. Okay. We'll skip. Uh, Tony. <coughs> wow. Um, uh, what I did was ended up going down to uh, Fort Dix and shooting the Ruger Precision 6.5 Creedmoor. I posted the picture up on Instagram. If you guys follow me, also on uh, on Simon Says Train on Facebook, it was as cool as I thought it would be for an out of the box thousand dollar gun with a fifteen hundred dollar optic on it. So uh, a friend of mine asked me to zero it for him, and I zeroed it. And then he proceeded to uh, just make tiny groups at a hundred yards just for the fun of it. Um, he was working at the range, so he only got every few minutes to come out. So while he was doing that, I was shooting the uh, Henry repeating arms, sent a couple of lever actions, the Golden Boy and the Frontier. And I was uh, shooting those for groups and just had some fun with it, plinking. A uh, bunch of fun guns. I'm going out with them again tomorrow. And I'm taking on my CZ455 Ultramax. So we're going to shoot some groups, see which one shoots better, or just compare all three of the 22s to each other. So that's what I did last week and what I'll hopefully be doing tomorrow at the range. Sweet. Uh, Rob, did you do anything else this week? Nah, not really. The weather down here was supposed to not be so good, so I kind of just kind of did a uh, work around the house weekend. I got called into work a few times, so I really didn't have time to go to the gun range, but Tony, that Ruger Precision, isn't that a phenomenal gun? The Ruger Precision 6.5 was just so much fun to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> with their, um, what do you call it, the muzzle brake they have on it? Oh, my you, God. It, it doesn't move. It's nothing. I mean, 5.56 five, recoil. <laughs> just nothing. That, that's why I did the long-range shooting course in a couple of weeks ago. God, that thing is just fantastic. What glass did you have on it? Uh, my, uh, Vortex. Vortex, okay. I want to say the... the Five to twenty-four. I think it's the PST. First focal okay. plane. Yeah, the, I'll tell you what, those are nice. First, first focal plane is a sweet scope for long distance shooting, especially when you're at five hundred yards. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, oh. Five hundred yards. Hey Zane, remember five hundred yards in the Marine Corps? I do. I do indeed. <laughs> That's where everybody maxed out. That's where everybody maxed out at. It's like ten, 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 ten. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Sean. Did I go into Marine Corps stories again? I apologize. Talk about your, your time in the military. I didn't say nothing. I am talking. <laughs> I'm just goofing on Sean. He was 4F. 
I don't wonder what I mean. Nah, I ain't going there. <laughs> is, is that like 4-H, but lower in the alphabet? <laughs> it's pretty much. No, I'm just joking. No, <clears throat> Sean's still mad because I put a really cool meme on the internet today, and I forgot to tag him in it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> No, 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 it's fine. I'm just I'm just here to provide all Tony's content and get zero credit for it. The guy hasn't had an original thought in 15 years, but that's okay. Keep, keep busting my chops about the four years you were in the air wing of the Marine Corps. One, five years. Watch yourself. Two, still okay. saying boot camp made no difference. And and three, uh, your, your pistols look really pretty. Too bad nobody knows they're yours. Whoa. <laughs> Dang. Oh, uh, dude, that's what happens when I post at 4 o'clock in the morning. I forget things. Yeah, he's got every excuse in the book. I'm I want a old. divorce. <laughs> you can't get no better than me. <laughs> Who's going to be your Shall friend Shall we move now? on to Zane now? <laughs> yes, Who's going to be his friend now? Maj Torre? <laughs> hey, Zane, what have you been doing for the last week in guns? Well, I did. I taught two concealed carry classes this weekend. And... I identified an issue with pinky extensions on SCCY guns or sky guns, whatever you call them. Sky. Um, they, uh, it hurts when you tap rack with them. Um, <laughs> and I had an opportunity to do a little hog hunting and uh, that's about it. Sweet. Nice. Get anything? I got one small hog. I gave it to someone who wanted to eat it. Okay. Cool. Now, the, the hogs in Florida, they're not uh, riddled with diseases and stuff like that? No, not too bad. There's okay. a lot of guys out here that'll eat them. Um, okay. I usually, I typically don't. Um, I'm not a big fan, but I can always find someone that wants them. They mainly just destroy the crops and destroy the oh, they pastures. Tear up and everything. They tear up everything in their wake. Everything. I guess it could be a lot worse up here, huh, Tony? What's that? Uh, you've got no. Trenton for that, Tony. No, I've got a rabbit problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's a uh, that's a uh, be a lot worse. Yeah, that that's what you call a, a ten twenty two with a silencer. Sorry, no, that's what that's what he called a hot sign with a twenty two cal twenty two caliber hot sign. And he was dropping them with that. I'm assuming that's what you used the other day. Um, I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm not giving. We don't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I will tell you, rabbit tastes an awful lot like chicken. <laughs> Everything tastes like chicken. chicken. It's, yeah. it's dark meat chicken. Get it right. All right, y'all need to yes. cut down with the dark meat jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly what I told the guy at work today. I was like, it tastes just like dark meat chicken. And he was like, I'm not eating that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not really a selling point for most people. He's like, I'm not going to try it to find out. Well, that's his his loss. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, within five minutes, he went from stealing my vegetables to being on the grill. <laughs> nice. He never even got cold. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> the best. There you go. All right, Chad, do you do anything good? Uh, actually, I went out Saturday and was working on that, uh, doing some shooting on steel plates targets with that ft bullseye site that i got in for review uh it's kind of yeah, it's interesting that's for sure i mean i think the biggest flaw is is you can't adjust you know left or right really because the sh- site's so short okay <laughs> no no i was i was really thinking about that because i saw it and it's kind of like a red dot without being red dot yeah and with someone like me with, you know, stigmatism, it kind of sucks because red dots all just look like blurs and stars and asterisks and everything else when you look through them. So <clears throat> I thought that would be cool, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it would look when you look through it because you because it's not actually projecting like a red dot does. So it might not flare out, but like I said, it's. It's kind of one of those things you can you put it on there and where it shoots is where it shoots. I actually loosened the mounting screws a little bit and kind of tweaked it at a slight angle as much as I could to get mine to shoot center uh, because it was off about three inches with my to the right 
and you know if you just move the site it's not like moving a rear site in the normal with a parasites because it's all one package so mm -hmm. you move the site and it only moves it you know you can move it a half an inch and it'll only move the impact a half an inch because you're okay. actually using it like a regular site so that was kind of a disappointment but you know i'll put some more time into it you could pick it up pretty quick even with my old eyes so there was that i did once i got it so it was shooting good i didn't have any problem with like 10 meter plate racks or anything so did you did you There's fire all... different types of ammo through it to see if that was maybe part of the point of I, impact point of aim shift i i did uh and all of the, they you know, some actually I some like blazer brass was like, I don't know, about four inches to the right. Uh, and this is at like seven to ten yards. And then the spear gold dot was two and a half to three. Uh, so I was able to get it. So it was shooting center by tweaking it. But I don't know how long it'll stay in that position. Uh basically tried different weights of nine and it would you know the typical it would shoot higher or lower like any fixed site so there was that cool sweet that's about all i did okay tried to figure out this podcasting crap well i didn't do anything in guns so that makes it really easy um so that actually leads us into the announcements and the first announcement it's kind of hard to to say uh, I'm going to be stepping down as host of this podcast, and uh, it's it's been kind of a long time coming, but I'm I'm juggling a lot of things right now professionally, and uh, the one of the one of the balls has to, has to leave the group, and uh, it's going to have to be this show. I do enjoy still doing reviews, so I think I will be coming back every now and then to uh, I'll still be publishing reviews on the Firearms Insider website, and then. When my schedule allows it, I'll come on to the podcast as a guest panelist and, and talk about my review. Um, like the Tavor, I still really want to re finish my review on that. That's been years in the making. Now that I finally have a suppressor, I can make sure my review entails suppressed shooting it with the IWI Tavor. Um, but beyond that, the the future of the podcast is, is we're kind of discussing that right now amongst us um, so basically these guys are going to try and keep it going. It's kind of a sink or swim type of situation, but uh, I have faith that they're going to figure it out and hopefully continue the podcast. Um, if there's some kind of technical stuff where we might not be able to record every uh, week. Um, so it might be a little bit more sparse as far as the episodes go, but hopefully it'll get back up to where it was. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that announcement. <clears throat> um, other than that, let's get right into the rest of the announcements and get the show on the road. I got our fun review. I'm going to be talking about these SKD tactical pig full dexterity alpha gloves. And Chad's got a review of a, uh, a 22 compensator. So we're not going to talk about any other new products today. We're just going to be covering these two reviews and uh, that should do it. So the bandwidth sponsor for this podcast is Patriot Patch Co. And uh, always will be for the time being, as far as what I understand. Uh, so the June patch of the month is going to be the M80 Firecracker. And I've actually got one in my hand. So awesome. So uh, if you're lucky, you grew up uh, with your childhood where you had access to these small explosives and you got to play around with them and conduct various mischief with them so uh fifteen dollars a month will get you this patch for the month of june and a matching vinyl sticker uh they're very awesome uh if you're not watching the video it's a m80 firecracker red m80 firecracker do not hold in hand patriot patch co or written on the outside of it and it's got a lit fuse so it looks like a little cherry bomb on your uh to go on your patch sleeve or your hat. <clears throat> so $15 a month gets you that and a sticker. And just because I love you guys, and if you're watching the YouTube, uh, there's a very select few of you that do watch the YouTube channel. 
So I'm going to give you a sneak preview of July's patch that nobody else knows about. There. I'm not going to describe it. I'm just going to show it on nice. the YouTube feed. No, so that, is July. that looks that is good. Gorgeous. I like that. Thank you. Yep. So if you're listening and you're like, oh, man, I want to see that, you got to go to YouTube and check out the feed. And this is partially why I'm having to, to bow out of, of hosting duties because um, I've got more creative things coming and I just need more time during the day to pump out this awesome stuff. We're ramping up a lot with Patriot Pashko, actually. Um, so keep your eyes peeled with that. Hopefully these guys will uh, also keep an eye on that and, and let the listeners know when new Patriot Patch stuff is coming down the pike or when it launches on the website. Well, you'll have to let us know so we can let them know. I'll let, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll be your uh, liaison for Patriot Patch Co. Sorry, taking a sip. I'm having a victory drink here. Um, so the pre-orders, we still have the Till Death to Us part morale patch as part of the pre-orders. So it's got a bride and a groom on the top of a wedding cake. It says Till Death to Us part. And the uh, groom's holding a scar 17. And the bride is holding dual Glocks, 42s, 43s, 26s. Use your imagination. They're handguns. <clears throat> and then we also got the, uh, it's no longer a pre-order, but we do have that safe space patch that a lot of people have been wanting the safe space patch from uh, the first month we did Patch the Month Club, but nobody knew about it yet. So it was kind of like a really super exclusive rare only the the first people that got into the club got that patch well uh to compromise and let everyone have a chance to get that concept but yet not be the same we kind of released a 2.0 of safe space safe space so it's a it's a, it's another safe but it's got a lot more goodies in there more boxes of ammo um shotgun a uh, mac 10 or mac 11 ar-15 ak and hk in the background a glock uh, Magnum Research, uh, Desert Eagle, and a revolver, some grenades, some magazines. I pretty much maximize the amount of detail I can get into a morale patch in PVC. So, uh, and actually, I had to break into Sean's house and and take photographs of the inside of his safe so I can get a good idea what a proper safe should look like. So I do you appreciate. Finally, him. confess, you rat. That's right. You should change <laughs> the, the locks on your back door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, mm -hmm. I put those locks on the back door. Two, <laughs> <laughs> got changed, how, do, how do you think he found out how to get into them? Well, I opened yeah. it with a Snickers bar, so I thought it was you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Shots fired. That's right. <laughs> well, this is like a parting salvo from Ryan. Yeah, yeah. no. I'm bringing the heat. All right. So that's He's me. not bringing any apple home. He's <laughs> spending it all right here. Yeah. It's like one right. his last time, man. Oh, yeah, that's one down. How many more? I got four more to go. No one's safe. Uh, so that's it. That's it for Patriot Patch Co. Uh, so if you're still going to be coming to TriggerCon uh, in July, July 27th through the 30th, me and Chad will be there, um, being that he is from Oregon and I'm in Washington. So I'll be running the Patriot Patch Co. booth uh, 28th through the 30th. 27th will both be at their industry day at the range. Um, oh, yeah. So make sure if you're if you're going and you see us, stop and say hi. Um, you know, I'll be willing to sign T-shirts, and Chad will be willing to sign. I don't know something. Uh, children. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Speaking oh, no. of signatures, uh, at the machine gun shoot, I ran into the guy that had the signed handkerchief last year. Oh no <laughs> way! Yeah, he was like, "Hey, I still have that." I was like, "Good." It's in Sharpie. Probably won't watch out. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't you know who I am? I signed a handkerchief once. Yeah. That's right. Man, right. there's no yeah. stopping this guy, man. Tactical hanky. <laughs> uh, so we also got the listener support program that will continue to go on. Uh, if these guys do a much better job than I did, please pledge more money to the podcast to let them know that they're doing a good job. Piece of um, so you can do that by going to firemanradio.tv <laughs> and go to the pledge page and pledge to the podcast. Now, no matter what amount of money you or the more money you pledge, the more sizable reward you get in the form of Patriot Patch swag. 
that kind of mutual beneficiary relationship will still happen. Um, so if you want some sweet Patriot Patch stuff and you also want to keep this show going, make sure you pledge. Uh, also, if you're shopping Amazon, uh, you can give us some help with that using that affiliate link at firearmsradio.tv and click on the Amazon button or just firearmsradio.tv slash Amazon and then do your Amazon shopping. Um, that'll help us out with that as far as the network. So now we're going to get into the coupon codes. Black Bag Resources. What's that coupon code you got for us, Sean? Timber! 20% off NJ Concealment Furniture 1911 wood grip panels until June 30th. I heard you got a set, Ryan. You know, d little, describe, little told me. Describe, describe these for me. What are you talking about? They're uh, they're custom wood grip panels for your 1911 that uh, I heard you might have picked up recently. Yeah, that's that's so weird because I've been looking at these and they're sitting right on my desk. Does that I mean, does that look like it? Well, wait. Yeah, it's got like some focus. goofy logo on it. Can you guys see that? He needs to. Talk. <laughs> really. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Keep screwing around with me, Tony. <laughs> there you go. So Keep I messing with me, to, dude. You're going to learn. I happen to own some 1911 grips that have the 2A4E logo burned into them. So this there will be go. one of those items that I, I plan on writing review and then hopping back on the show to talk about. That, um, those are I mean, one of the problems. They are. There's only so much you can say about 1911 grips, but you know I've been doing this for long enough. I'll find more things to say. Yeah, <laughs> so, there you go. Those gloves. That's, That's like right. a two-hour review. Stand by. <clears throat> the wood yeah, had a Tony hickory, 1911. The wood had a hickory, almost cherry taste. <laughs> 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 well, they are cherry, so that makes sense. Yeah, right. <laughs> cool. And then the uh, the other coupon code, Simon says train for free shipping on any order because that order is being directly donated to Tony and the segment is for everyone to shoot. And then you get the satisfaction of knowing you gave to a charity case. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Seriously. For a basket <laughs> case, one <or> two. <clears throat> Okay, no more drinking for him on the show. I, I got you what twice, Tony. I'm sorry. Show? I'm supposed Man, to be Ryan spreading this around. Lighten him up. Lighten him up. Right. Brian, you well, can have another beer, man. He is an yeah, easy right? target. Uh, so uh, if you also live in Washington State and have private property, hit us up. Um, actually, I'm probably going to do more shooting in the, uh, the Olympic uh, Capital Forest here uh coming up because i need to test out my tavor and, and shoot suppressed uh out in the open because going to an indoor range doesn't really do me any favors with uh seeing how that suppressor affects the uh the report so um and i'm still working on a sweet private spot but that's still in the works so i'm hoping to still maintain a relationship with this podcast where i can still you know when i have time go shoot and record and then still post it on the firearms radio network youtube page and then talk about the day on here uh, when my schedule allows. So those are the announcements. Now we're going to get right into the uh, the product reviews. So um, I guess I, I think I'm going to go first because I, I wrote it in the show notes as me going first. So that makes it easy. Well, I was going to say you have to go first since, you know, people that skip out, you know, you kind of have to go first. Because this is your last episode. That is true. And uh, they'll stay So you're kind of like longer. a guest. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So the SKD Tactical Pig Full Dexterity Tactical Alpha Gloves. Say that 10 times fast. 10 times fast there. My fingers. Uh, so in my quest to just get better shooting gloves... You know, I, I already did a review on those mechanics impact gloves. They're really just fancy uh, mechanics gloves. They're not really shooting gloves. Whereas these are specifically and painstakingly designed by small Asian hands to be uh, very good quality shooting gloves for the outdoor enthusiast who shoots tactical shooters, competitors, 
Um, I've even seen some guys like working in, you know, where their job is kind of more to, to operate security or uh, in military, they enjoy using these gloves. So what's the deal with these gloves? Well, they are really designed to be the most uh, as comfortable and more form fitting as possible with the caveat that they have a shorter lifespan. So I know that kind of sucks, but when it comes to uh, designing a product that it's going to get used and, and flexed in so many different ways, such as gloves, it's really hard to build something that's going to last for like over two years with continual use and not cost like $200. Um, so that's kind of what SKD has been trying to uh, balance, and that's where these gloves kind of come from. So they're priced to be easily replaced because they're saying flat out, hey, eventually you're going to bust a seam just because these, they're custom, they're tailored a little bit more tighter so that you don't have these big old welder's gloves that prevent you from manipulating your controls, your firearm, getting good grips on things as well as doing like more delicate tasks. Um, and, and these actually have conductive fingertips so you can use your smartphone or your tablet or your laptop with a, a mouse tracking pad. <clears throat> so um, that's kind of what I, I wanted to do a review on these. Uh, so let's see, they're under 50 bucks. So I, I think I'll talk about the price point right off the top of my head. Uh, or at the, the beginning of the review. So $42.95 is the retail price. And I think you can only get them at SKD Tactical. So you the way you kind of have to think about it is that it's kind of like SKD is trying to convince their customers to buy the product, use it hard, use it till it fails, and then replace it, and then repeat the process which seems kind of weird because we're all, we all think that everything should last forever. Like, you know, I bought a PMAG, it should last forever. What do you mean it wore out or cracked? You know, we've got this kind of mentality in the firearms industry that everything has to, you know, be made of titanium and last for years and years and be a heirloom to pass on to your kids when really, if you're actually using the gear, it's going to get, you know, it's disposable. It's going to get used and abused and you're going to need to replace it once it starts to break down. So, that's kind of where these gloves gloves fit in. Um, there's a lot of people that would think, you know, they're not, they're not going to spend forty or you know forty fifty dollars on underwear, let alone gloves. Why the hell would they do that with these? Well, uh, in my review, I've tried to do as much as I can with these gloves on. I even tried writing the show notes for this podcast with these gloves on. It wasn't easy. Um, but you'll see in my review, I've got some photos of me using the phone, uh, typing, using the, the, the touchpad on the iPad or on the iPhone. I Googled Tony Simon and it came out, uh, Tony Simonetta as a possible search result, which I, I love that. So I think Tony's got a, another <clears throat> burn coming his way. Yeah, whatever, dude. Talk about your gloves. <laughs> Uh, I'm liking the look in that photo. What's that? Tony Simo. Tony Simo. Simone. Tony Simotes. Tony right, Simonetta. How about Bridget? Bridget. Bridget. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also tried navigating the Firearms Insider uh, web page with these fingers. Uh, the thing is that the, the pad is what's conductive and not the tip. So a lot of people that have gloves are kind of more prone to try and use the tip when that that's not the conductive part because you're really not making a good connection with your the just pad the of your finger. Right, just the tip. So you got to use the pad of your finger. Um, so that's something to take note. As far as shooting goes, these are fantastic because, um, you know, you don't need an enlarged uh, winterized trigger guard for shooting like AR-15s. Or other kind of guns, no matter the size of the trigger guard, the the fabric, the material is kind of d specifically designed so it doesn't add any extra mass to your hand. Um, so, like shotguns, pistols, rifles, um, it really doesn't affect your manipulation of the firearm, but yet it protects your hand in case you, you know, like I've I've saw somebody uh, rack an air, uh, an AK charging handle and cut their hand open on the dust cover because it was a little sharp 
uh, where the ejection port is. So, I mean, when you're shooting, uh, you re gloves should be kind of part of the main uh, protective gear as far as eye pro and ear pro. There should be hand pro in there, but a lot of people forego that. Um, and I think that... Rob's a hand pro. <laughs> yeah, right? Rob, Rob's a hand pro. <laughs> what are you bringing me to this for? I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just throwing the rules up for this podcast, aren't we? Yeah. All right, so the... Uh, no, I'll admit, like, I've been using these for about a year, maybe about uh, 16 months, and they do have wear. Um, I do have a split on my uh, right-hand ring finger, show that in the camera, so that seams, seam is popping right there. So the manufacturer knows that's going to happen, and, and basically they tell you, hey, good job, you know, you used them to get, to, to they, you know, broke, now buy new ones. So I think it would be better for SKD to say, hey, Send us your old gloves, and we'll give you a discount on the new pair, like trade-in program. That would be great, but they don't have that. So, sorry. That's that's my one free idea for them if they want to improve their product and sell more of these. Um, but I've noticed a lot more, like, ads uh, in, like, recoil and stuff with the, the models are wearing these kind of gloves. Um, so I think it's kind of being more popular in that community. Uh, the palms are really nice on these. The, they're using a thin material called Clarino, and that's a trademark material. It's used to increase uh, sensitivity greatly, which obviously is great for when you're applying trigger pressure on your, your trigger finger. Um, so it's nice that they actually paid specific attention to the trigger fingers of these gloves, because that's obviously where you want more sensitivity over time. They also have little ventilation holes in the fingers. Let me see if I can get that in the camera. So that yeah, helps with evaporating some perspiration and uh, so your hands don't get all uh, sweaty and clammy. And uh, the way that they designed the, the joint is actually really cr critical for good grip. So you can see that um, when I make a fist, the material is kind of split the knuckles where it's layered. Um, so that's specifically so that it doesn't get too tight around your fingers, and that but you can still make a full, complete grip instead of just kind of like a half-ass grip. Obviously, great for uh, shooting and gripping firearms. <clears throat> um, so see, the, the usually the seams of gloves are like kind of right through the fingertips. Well, they specifically design these gloves so that the seams are not right over the tops. And that kind of wraps over your fingers. So that also really helps with with shooting and having that fingertip uh, pressure sensitivity. Um, and then also obviously protects your fingernails too from damage. If, you know, you're trying to grow out your mani-pedi and you jam it into something. Obviously, I'm joking. <clears throat> um, so what they try to do is they use a single layer of material wherever possible so that you still have that sensitivity, um, but they still have some overlap of the material for strength. Um, so it kind of allows a more natural uh, freedom of movement with natural creases in your hand and the contours when you're making a fist or gestures or otherwise just gripping and picking things up. Um, <clears throat> so the, the back of the gloves are covered in 1000D stretch ballistic nylon, which kind of helps cut down on the pressure at the seams when you make a fist because your knuckles are popping out like you, Jackman. Um, so there's uh, even an area of, of micro suede back there, which is, I'm, I'm not even joking you, it's specifically designed for you to wipe your boogers when you're shooting in the cold weather and you've got like a runny nose. That's specifically what this little suede pad is for is to uh, clear your mustache of, of boogers, which is funny, but uh, also very useful. <clears throat> Mine don't have any boogers on them. I already checked. Now, the, the cuff of these gloves is really nice. They used a shortened cuff, which makes sense for shooting guns that have different grip angles, you know, 1911s versus AR-15s, things like that. Um, but they have a... Uh, Velcro, kind of a, a a different. It's it's similar to Velcro. It's got a hook and loop, but it's a little bit more uh, modern, so that it doesn't snag on just every other thing that you have. So if you 
were to throw this in with a pile of clothes, it wouldn't like stick onto everything. So that's kind of nice that they use that. It's got PVC uh, logos on the cuff as well. So they got their little uh, pig, tiger stripe pig logo. Obviously, me, I work for Pager Patch, so I appreciate anytime someone adds some PVC details onto a product. Um, but the other nice thing is they add this uh, this paracord to the cuff, so you can kind of pull it down on your, get your hand in there when you're for, first putting the glove on. Um, so it's kind of not real super intrusive, and it uh, gives you a nice leverage point for getting your hand in there. Uh, let's see. So they have their uh, sizing chart on their website, and I link to that in the show notes. Because they they size these gloves a lot more specific. Um, you really want to make sure you measure your hand before ordering, so that way you get exactly what's going to fit and be snug for your hand. Um, and and notice when you get these gloves, if it feels snug. It's it's the right size. If it does not feel snug, then you actually ordered too large. Um, so make sure you measure your hand length as well as your hand width according to their glove sizing chart. And follow those directions. Um, let's see. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, um, right on SKD's website, it says at the end of the day, the Pig FDT Alpha gloves are a consumable product that will provide the user with the best tactile dexterity available in a tactical glove and should be worn to destruction then discarded and replaced. The selection of super sensitive materials and extremely light seams or extremely tight seams mean that these gloves will eventually wear out and there are no warranties implied. Please try them on and inspect them thoroughly for fit and finish before removing them from the hang tag, but be forewarned, you will not want to take them off. So, like I said, if they let you, like, send in your old pair and they gave you, like, 10% off, I mean, that, that would not really ding their profits and still, I think that would improve uh, how many uh, return customers that they have. But that's just me. <clears throat> so, um, the, these are actually my first pair. And based on me splitting the seam, I'm going to wear them a little bit more, take them a couple more range times, range trips, and uh, eventually I will replace them. It will probably get another pair just because I've enjoyed them so much. Um, I don't go to the range very often, more like maybe once or twice a month on average. But uh, I, I feel like these are the best shooting gloves I have had so far. And even though that they're not going to last as long as some other more expensive or more bulky gloves. I do greatly appreciate the, the benefit of having them be a lot more tighter and being able to do more tasks with them and not like getting frustrated because I can't use my, my, my ballistic app on my phone or Instagram if I'm taking pictures. So I got to rip my glove, one glove off to use it. It's nice that you can still do that with these gloves. Just keep in mind that you're not going to be able to type as well with bare hands than with these gloves. So like if you just need to press like one button on your phone or one button at a time, it's fine. If you're trying to like put in all your hashtags, hashtag Simon says train, hashtag high point, hashtag dollar dollar bills, y'all. Like it's gonna be a pain in the butt and you might as well take your glove off anyway, but I'm just letting you guys know. <clears throat> so the uh, the eight key points, uh, the claim to fame is so much sensitivity that you can wear these on your next date with Pamela Henderson. Uh, target market is shooters of all types. Features and benefits is conductive thumb and finger material for touchscreen use. Single layer multi-piece palm. Isolated trigger finger using Clarino material. Forchette or forchette <laughs> material is ventilated for maximum sweat wicking. Low profile hook and loop closure, flex joints for enhanced flexibility, dual jo dual flex joints for trigger finger, uh, bar tacked paracord pull loop, micro suede no nose wipe, ventilation holes in the palm and fingers for more sweat wicking, isolated edge padding, uh, wrap over fingertips for fingernail protection, and the stretch ballistic nylon 1000D padded knuckles. Uh, these do come in lots of different colors, uh, and they also come in women's sizes too. So 
if you're looking to get something for your uh, your range partner that's female, um, you make sure you, you can get her these gloves too. And I know she'll love them. Um, so they come in black, coyote, ranger green, and carbon gray. These are the ranger green. I'll probably get gray next because, you know, carbon gray is close to battleship gray. So got to get me one of those. Uh, what other people are saying, I do have a uh, a link or no, a review that I pasted into my into my firearms insider review. So if you want to hear what somebody else said from uh, from SKD a user review, make sure you read that. Uh, price point forty two ninety five. If you need it now, like I said, SKD Tactical it seems to have the monopoly on the pig brand, so that's. They're going to be having a shop on their website to buy that. But if you are all part of their mailing email list, they are constantly sending out emails with promotions and stuff. So you might be able to get these even less if you time it right and you just follow their promotions. Uh, so for my rating, I gave it a 7.5. Uh, pros, the finger and thumb work with touchscreens or, or smart devices or on smart devices. Uh, the vent holes, because I have sweaty man hands and it kind of helps to reduce the sweating after prolonged use. Uh, the improved dexterity for tasks that otherwise remove uh, require removing the glove to do the job. Oh, here's an example. So like opening a knife, you know, like very easily can open this bench made with, with one hand using the glove. Um, so it allows you to do all sorts of tasks. Uh, let's see, I threw myself off there. Uh, feels great in all hand positions, giggity. Uh, <laughs> single layer palm increases sensitivity, also giggity. Uh, the cons, interior palm finger material can be slippery on non-textured guns. So because it's this cloth material, if you get it wet and you're trying to grab onto something that's metal or something that's not, textured uh, you're not going to have the best grip on that so make sure you are aware uh, the design causes expedited wear i've already talked about that several times i even showed you a spot where the seam is starting to blow out um, but if you don't go through your shooting gloves every couple of years you're not shooting enough in my opinion so i'll go ahead and leave you with that uh, it's a single layer vent holes work against you when it's uh, wet or cold so if you're shooting in the rain in the winter, uh, these gloves aren't going to repel that moisture. They're kind of kind of uh, going to let it get to your skin. So be aware of that. And they are made overseas if that matters to you. So that's my review. 7.5 as good. Do um, you guys have any questions? I'm just disappointed your Pamela Henderson joke didn't hit better. <laughs> That's because well, What do you expect? <laughs> now, and I can't get over this. If you would have hit enter on Tony Simon when you Googled it, my picture would have been the second one that showed up. Just saying. I've already got your picture as my screensaver, though. You know, that's real creepy now that you have a glove and you showed everybody how you opened the knife. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, you wanted a thorough test on those gloves, didn't you? Yeah, great, OJ. OJ's got a new glove. Right. <laughs> he's got a bunch of pictures of Tony Simon, and he's burning out the palms on those gloves. Yeah, with Pamela <laughs> you, Anderson. If you want to give yourself a tactical stranger, try these gloves out. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. It's oh, like you what? No. That's it's like make my question sound mugged. look weird. Uh, He's trying to kill this show on his way out. <laughs> it's, like, it's like senior year. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah, it's I'm almost out. senioritis on this episode. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, um, what would you compare the dexterity to? Uh, closer to a mechanic style glove or? Yeah, I would, I would compare it more to a mechanic style glove. The palm is like a big difference because I haven't encountered a lot of gloves that had kind of a intelligently designed palm so i mean i could kind of roll my thumbs around roll and uh, you know touch my thumb to my pinky and i mean there's there's a lot of dexterity here that I, I i didn't get with like my mechanics gloves um or if you are getting that much dexterity that then there's like literally no padding on them at all it's like putting on a sock for your hand so i got you all right yeah, it, it's it's a good balance, I would say, of dexterity, and yet it's, you know, it's not gonna, you know, offer little to no protection at all. 
So their big deal. claim to fame is use this glove till it falls apart and buy another pair. Yeah. yeah. So no warranty issue whatsoever. They're just saying use it until it goes. Oh my god. What was the price on those? <laughs> Forty-two ninety-five. Yeah. Use it till you break it, then buy another one for another forty-two ninety-five. Jeez, but they feel great really good. Smart business plan. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you you can wipe your nose on the back. I mean, that's technology Repeat customers. right there. <laughs> here, I'll do it on the air. Yeah, oh, snot grabber. So oh, much okay, better. Yummy. No, I mean, they have I, a low capacity snot glove for New Jersey. Yeah, I was looking <laughs> at it. <clears throat> I'm like full dexter a pig full dexterity tactical FT just stop. Just stop. It's a freaking oh. glove, dude. Just stop. Uh, marketing just kills me. Come on, man. Those are like Trojan ultra thins. <laughs> Ribbed for, for increased pleasure. sensitivity. <laughs> Whoa. You gonna shut it off now, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> no, because actually it's funny because uh, I I'd normally I'd feel really embarrassed thinking, oh, God, I hope the manufacturer doesn't hear this. But SKD Tactical has some of the funniest marketing I've, e marketing I've ever seen. Um, I mean, they, they send you like, you know, I've seen Chuck Norris jokes on the back of their business cards, I think. Um, they're, they're totally down with being a little bit more out there and racy. So... Obviously, the with the Pamela Hamla joke or Pamela Henderson joke right on their website, um, that they're down for a little bit more. Uh, they us, don't take themselves too seriously. Well, they should. Well, they don't. They don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I don't think they should take themselves too seriously. Too seriously. There's there's too many companies out there that already do that. Way and, too seriously. They take themselves way too seriously. Yeah. I mean, just just enough tactical companies I, i'm just really sick and tired of it <laughs> we were operating operate shut up just shut up you're not the first person to ever serve in the military and opened a company world war ii vets out the yin yang did that and you didn't hear them running around screaming about it and you know you're, you're not crap if you aren't airborne and all the other uh i got some issues as a veteran <laughs> Some veterans are way too over the I don't think your issues stuff. have anything to do with you being a veteran. <laughs> Shut up. Omar. I love how he just went from, you know, you're really not special for being, you know, one of the 65 bajillion veterans yeah. to open your own business. And as a as a veteran-owned business, I feel the need to point. Wait a what? minute. Wait a minute. No, reason being, Anybody at least I can say. that yo-yo go up and down? There's not a yo-yo. I, I can speak from that. Because some people don't know who, who my background and go, oh my God, here's someone that hates the military. No, I don't, but you get a little tired of it sometimes, man. <laughs> no, anybody who's talked to you for more than 90 seconds knows your history. <laughs> <laughs> don't hate, shut up. I, I was going to say, is that wow. any Marine? <laughs> <clears throat> Most of them. Yeah. Uh, Zane's on here, so I could ask him. Go ahead. <laughs> We're, we're if, awesome. If a vegan Marine does CrossFit, which one do they tell you about first? Marine Corps. <laughs> I was going to go with CrossFit. Marine Corps. Um, oh. No. Uh. <laughs> and vegans aren't allowed to be Marines anyway, right? No, no. There's some vegan Marines. I'm sure there's some very broken like that. Hey, Ryan, when I do my review, can I, like, mute these guys from my end? <laughs> because I'm not sure I can <laughs> keep a straight face while I'm working on it. No, no, let's hear about your 22 compensator. Yeah, how it, oh, how it yeah, tames the recoil. Everything. <clears throat> it does. Yes, I'm sure it does. <laughs> that's because uh, you have a muscle tone. That's because he has the muscle tone of veal. So he needs a compensator <laughs> well, on his 22. Hey, when you get that old, your muscles deteriorate, okay? He bruises easy. <laughs> Listen, it was this where okay. he didn't have to start taking like three inch or a day, and he just his stomach can't handle that. <laughs> He feels loaded. <laughs> I'm getting back. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, let's uh, let's see if I can get back on track here. Okay, so as you guys know, or you hinted at, I'm reviewing a compensator. It is the game changer compensator. <laughs> <laughs> the game changer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, just wait. Uh, it is from Tandem Cross, and we'll discuss them here a little bit. It is a 22 long rifle compensator, so you guys can make fun of me all you want. But 
you know, as I said in the first thing, first sentence, compensators for small caliber handguns can seem pointless to some, like Tony Simon. Oh, I forgot that. <laughs> uh, because there's not much recoil, as we all know. Uh, but they do still benefit from these. Uh, I think Tandem Cross feels the same way because they make all kinds of stuff for 22s. Uh, I actually put a little little video of like five, six seconds of a magazine going through this thing so you can go to the review and watch it. Uh, so I received this from them. Uh, they did send it to me for review. Uh, it's a nice little comp. Uh, I put it on my 2245 Mark II, which they don't list as one of the firearms it fits, but mine was previously threaded, so it works. Uh, it comes with an O-ring that they use as a type of crush washer and seal. So it does both. It seals it, and it puts it on so you can screw it on, line the top holes up, which always helps. Uh, there was some resistance to the O-ring, so I just kind of kept screwing it on until it was lined up, and it seemed to held so far. Uh, I didn't actually put any Loctite or anything on it because I wasn't sure if I have to return it or not. Uh, it doesn't have... The compensator doesn't have any bottom holes. So... I preferred this type as opposed to a lot of the 22 compensators that are more of a diffuser style, I guess. And they have little holes all the way around them. Uh, this actually is worthwhile in that sense. Uh, so my experience with it, I kind of like Tony. Originally thought that the original name Game Changer was a little boisterous. But then I actually shot it, and, well, it does a great job of taming the recoil to about literally nothing. Same with the muzzle rise. Uh, I actually, this is kind of a review, but when I was shooting a steel challenge match, uh, one of the guys that shot 22 open division for years and years, uh, I was talking with him, and he actually runs the same compensator. Uh, pretty much said it's the only one that he likes now. Uh, he shot a lot of different ones and basically said this one actually does what it's supposed to. Uh, if you look at the little video and look closely, you can actually see the gases coming out the top and side. So you can see that it's actually doing something. Uh, some people might say it's louder. It's a 22, so I didn't really notice any it was that much louder if any uh being a compensator i'm sure it probably is but i did not notice any uh the game changer comps constructed basically anodized aluminum which you don't need steel on a 22 so uh it's got four slots on each side uh and then the four top holes uh they say it has large ports on the side for easy cleaning uh, I could see how it would make cleaning easier. I haven't cleaned it yet. Uh, so there's that. Uh, it comes with the standard half 28 threads, which pretty much is standard for 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, stuff like that. Uh, the thing I don't like about the comp is it runs a one inch diameter comp. And as you can see, maybe it is slightly larger than the barrel. And so, you know, it would have been nice if they could have trimmed it down a little so that it was flush with the barrel. It's kind of a cosmetic thing, but a lot of companies do make them the same size as the bull barrels or some of the other aftermarket uppers. Uh, it's one and a half, three quarters inches long, which seems about right for what they need to do with it. Uh, it will fit basically any 22 with half 28 threads. Uh, I didn't put it on my 1022, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, I think it probably works. You'll show or see better results on a pistol than you would on a rifle, but it still would do something. Uh, so if you're looking for the compensator, go check out Tandem Cross. 
Uh, they don't just make it for the Ruger. Basically, there's a list in the review of all the models that they actually say it'll work on. And then, like I said, it'll work on just about anything threaded. Uh, so we'll go through the Firearms Insider eight key points. Claim to Flame, it's your 22 long rifle compensator. Reduces felt recoil muzzle rise. Uh, the target market, shooters wanting less muzzle rise to get back on target faster, pretty much. Uh, if you're just a plinker, I don't really see that you'd probably need it. Or you might want it because it looks cool, but I don't think you'd really need it. Uh, the <clears throat> Excuse me. The features and benefits reduces muzzle rise. You know, the large openings, the standard threads, uh, you know, one inch diameter, one and three quarter inch long. It is hard coat anodized black. It is made in the USA, unlike Ryan's gloves. Uh, it has a lifetime guarantee. I don't know what would go wrong with it. So, uh, and it fits a bunch of different models. Uh, what other options, finishes are available? Uh, you can get all black. You can get the branded, which has the TK logo, which I don't know if you can see here, but is the one that they sent me. Or you can get one that, like on the side or top, it has hashtag tandemized on it, which I guess is one of their hashtags. Uh, what others are saying, well, we'll if you want to know that, you can go read it. There's a link to another review. Uh, the price point. Four dollars and ninety nine cents, so it's a pretty good deal for the price. Uh, it's cheaper than a set of pig gloves, uh, and you can get it from Tandem Cross or at Brownells themselves. So for our rating, the pros, you know, it reduces recoil, reduces muzzle rise. Uh, I really like the O ring seal in it. Uh, I thought that was a nice touch instead of like a crush washer or shims or anything to that effect. Uh, the price, it's pretty reasonable for what you're getting, and it is made in USA. Uh, the cons, diameter size, which really isn't a con to some people. Uh, and it is right now only available in black since it's anodized. You know, some people might want it to match their, you know, colored upper, Cerakoted upper or something. So I gave it a score of eight great because I was actually quite impressed with it. And like I told Ryan, my review was quick. So that's pretty much it. So when you were shooting that, did you shoot it with both standard velocity and um, subsonics? High, high, high velocity subsonics. Uh, I don't think I ran any of the hyper velocity through it. Just, But... It works better with the non, or you can tell a difference between the subsonics and your just regular velocity. Oh, yeah, that was my next question. Did you notice a better performance with the higher velocity stuff? You did, uh, or at least I did. Uh, I totally forgot to put that in the review, which good catch there. But yeah, I mean, subsonics aren't going as fast. I mean, they still, it still does a little bit because. It still does, but, you know, I don't usually shoot subsonics out of it anyway unless I want it to be really quiet with a suppressor on it, so. Cool. So tell me something. You took it to the steel, uh, steel match, right? Steel challenge match? Yeah, a couple of them. Yep. You see any difference in your times? Yes. Actually, okay, actually did, I did. Did they get better? <laughs> I know you see, saw a difference. Were they better? They they actually were, uh, but because it had a comp on it, uh, different division. Uh, yes, I no longer was able to shoot stock, just the stock or limited or whatever they call it. It threw me into the open, and oh. not that that really mattered, because I wasn't shooting it to try to get to place anywhere. I just thought it would be a really good test for it, so. Yes, and before I didn't shoot it in the open class, but I can still go back, look at the scores, find the same actual. Yeah, but, yeah your time's going to be your time. Yeah, and Steel Challenge doesn't really change. Okay, cool. I mean, you have, this, you have like, I think, 
seven to 10 standard stages and they, you shoot like six of them. So a lot of times you're shooting two or three of the same stages as the time before. Yeah, I was on their site. I'm looking at the different things they have for different guns. It's pretty cool. I mean, they make so much stuff. Well, I'm kind of laughing yeah. because I'm looking at the different things between the Walter, the Walter, what do they call the Walter 22 that Ruger oh. just stole? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know which one. The P22 from Walter. Yes. It's pretty much the SR22 from Ruger. <clears throat> and I didn't see the Ruger SR22 until later. I'm like, hey, I wonder if these Walter parts fit it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they, I also have my next up review is on something that actually I think plays a bigger role. They make this charging handle for the same thing where you can just grab it and pull it and they're starting to make it for they're starting to make it for glocks now too uh which i yeah, just saw that was just looking at was the glock model right and you know <clears throat> for some reason this model i don't know if the, really if the newer ones it's always been hard to charge i don't you know and so i put this on here there to make it easier and it does make it a lot easier so you know hey next time that's the review you're going to get. Hey, while we're talking about Ruger 22s, it's worth mentioning that if you have a Mark IV, there is a recall oh, yes. on that. It uh, can fire from the safe position or from the fire position, but not when the trigger's pulled. So, check Right. That out so if you, if have, you one. have one of those, yeah, check out Ruger's site and check out which model numbers and stuff. Yeah. So, so there hasn't been any reports of anyone uh, injuring themselves yet, but they found that if you – have the safety kind of midway right in between the safe and the fire position, uh, not fully engaged or disengaged and you pull the trigger and then you move the safety to the safe position, it could still drop the, the firing pin, the hammer and, and fire. So they're doing this as like a voluntary service before anyone gets hurt. So <laughs> right. Surprise. And long after the right. trigger's pulled, like you pull it and then 10 minutes later, switch it to fire and then it fires. Yeah, that's that can be dangerous because you know it doesn't take me ten minutes to forget something. And uh, good on Ruger for uh, taking the the proactive approach, but but shame on Ruger for letting that go in the first place because you're gonna expect a little bit more from them. I didn't mean to derail the conversation, but I just I thought of that and I felt like it was worth mentioning. Yeah, they only had it is. They only had thirteen years to get it right. I mean, I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, did, did, does anyone's Mark Threes or Mark Twos do that? I guess I could have tried that out online, but Man. it might be something with the new kind of redesign of the Mark IV. If some internals got moved around for that, well, yeah, they had to simplify. They had to simplify it, and obviously, once you simplify the Mark IV, so it doesn't yeah. take a doctorate in engineering to actually take it apart. It, it no, it's easy to take it apart. It's easy to take it apart. Putting it back together. Come on. on the Mark Twos and Threes, we'd have heard about it by now. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I don't think you would have heard about this one until Ruger said something themselves. Probably. Or somebody put a velocitor to their in through their leg. Then they had to call their mom. <laughs> yeah. At least they didn't go through the ceiling because they were in the basement. <laughs> Just shot my freaking leg. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so that's the two reviews we had for this week. Like I said, there's not going to be any product spotlight this week because um, we did two reviews in a row. Uh, listener feedback, there is nothing new. We did find a winner for that Magpul contest, so nobody needs to leave us an iTunes review saying, uh, how, guessing how many filthy Magpul shirts I own. Um, so that's over. Thank you for participating. Uh, so now we're going to let the, uh, the man here, Simon, Tony's, or uh, sorry, Simon wow. says train. <laughs> See, you guys encouraged me to drink, and then this happens. So oh, We didn't encourage a... you to pour out the beer and fill it with vodka. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, you sop. <laughs> All then, right. And Do your thing. Says train. <laughs> <laughs> Simon. <laughs> Simon. All right. <clears throat> the second inch for everyone diversity shoot is coming up. I don't have a July date yet. That's pretty much on me. We have to settle on one. 
I'm going to contact Sean later on, find out which days are good for him. And then we go right ahead and set up the diversity shoot in July in Lancaster County, PA. We also have the August 3rd event coming up at Gun for Hire Range in Woodland Park. We have some really cool swag, really cool gear, and I'm still working on getting more companies to send to us stuff. Um, I am reaching out to the firearms community right now and asking for parts so we can build an AR. Faxon already has donated a barrel. Company out of Mississippi that has donated a lower. So we're slowly putting this rifle together. Oh, yeah, and I got 792 a2 pistol grips from my co-host so i really appreciate <laughs> everyone constantly oh. sending me a2 pistol grips oh you're i've got welcome. two more here for you tony so 794 <laughs> yeah, i got okay. a few i got a few of my gun safe if you want them send them a few what oh okay, you, you, you got pistol just... grips <laughs> you know it's, it, it's a rule about ar-15s if you have one part you have to build one right so obviously i'm gonna have an arsenal ar-15s going um, but yeah, we're trying to build. Well, you better do it soon before help. the new governor gets in. Screwed. Um, <laughs> so if you guys can help out, really appreciate it. We're trying to get it built. Um, I'm going to contact some people about giving it a really cool uh, paint job, and we're hopefully can get it auctioned off, and use that money, of course, for when we become a charitable event. I'm also working on the T-shirts. They will pro they will be up by the beginning of July, and it's only going to be 31 days, limited edition, 2A, 4E T-shirts. And again, we use those funds to establish ourselves as a 5013C charity. You visit our page at diversityshoot.com. It says train on Instagram and Facebook, and also check out The Second Is For Everyone on Facebook if you want to follow all the things we do and get some of the silly inside jokes because of the stuff we post up as always thanks ryan and um i know you said you had a lot of nuts in the air so i'm sorry this is one of the nuts i'm sorry your nuts dropped um and you can't do this so you should leave the jokes to me buddy really yeah, okay <laughs> i don't know that was pretty good <laughs> all right pamela henderson um, i really appreciate it I um, really appreciate you allowing me on this show years ago. What is this, two years now? Yeah. Two years now, actually, to talk about this diversity issue. It, it really means a lot to me that you allowed me on to do this and then allowed me to keep coming back. <laughs> now you guys know why they put up those signs that say, don't feed the bears, because once they're in, they're hard to get rid of. <laughs> Well, back yeah. then, I thought, oh, man, this guy's got it like a nonprofit behind him. He'll add some credibility to our podcast. And then, <laughs> and then I got to know you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was you're even gullible. more better. Even more better. I don't know why you're yeah. joking. You, you got to know me, too. And Sean has absolutely nothing to say. He's been around the longest. He has Stockholm Syndrome at this point. Sean, I pity you. <laughs> yeah. To look at him is the pity him. Pity the fool. Yeah, well, All right. well, thanks a lot, Ryan, for skipping out on us. You know, yep. you let you let yeah, all of us fun. on here, and now we're stuck on here. So I see that years and years ago, your plan worked. You know, you just wanted to get people on here so that somebody would take over, and it took you longer than expected. Yeah, so... Uh, Chad is obviously going to be doing a review on CR-123 batteries next week. So <laughs> no, 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 no. Those are 2032s, 20 bro. 2032. Yeah. 2032s, yeah, yeah. And you know what? The, the Magpul reviews are going to drastically drop after this week. Oh, yeah. Magpul and Vortex is going to be ticked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, Brian, while the rest of these guys are having their heartfelt, long-winded speeches to your farewell, oh, up, all I have Brian. to say is Bye, Felicia. I guess we have to end the show now. <laughs> yeah, we have to. We can't go on anymore. No. We can't go on. <laughs> no. All right, guys. All right. Later. See you guys next week without Ryan. Well, maybe. If we maybe. can figure this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> how, does this, how does this here oh, internet I, work? <laughs> I still need to do the outro, guys. <laughs> we can't oh, close well, it yet. Do oh, the okay. outro. All right, send questions or comments to Chad <laughs> <laughs> or, or Tony or Rob or someone besides me. Uh, no, the, the, the email address, gungearreview at gmail.com, is still the primary email for the 
podcast. So keep sending your questions or comments there. Uh, remember to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. Um, and check out all the other shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.tv. And be sure to visit the Firearms Insider for reviews and industry coverage. And I do promise to keep publishing reviews on there. Um, and I, I sure hope you guys appreciate that when I do. Uh, oh, and then also follow Chad on the Firearms Insider on Instagram. What is that? I think it's Sean. I think Sean's trying to play me a song on my way out. Oh, is that, is that outro music? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to end the on. show before he can turn the sound up. So, <laughs> to to reiterate, thanks, guys. It's been a great... Uh, great couple of years hosting this thing i'm sorry i couldn't go on too much longer but i have faith that these knuckleheads will uh keep it going strong and, and won't let it die off and i'll i'll be keeping an eye on them when i can uh, All right. uh just keep keep following patriot patchco and um if you care enough my own personal stuff to see what i've been up to but lots of great creative things in the future for me so all right. All right. Yep. I'm going to go before I start crying. Oh. All right, Zane, it's your show now. <laughs> oh, lovely. Your <laughs> show? Oh, it's Zane's, yeah. Yeah, Zane, you're in charge. Welcome to it. Yeah, oh, sucks for you, new guy. Yep. <laughs> Let the game begin. That's right. <laughs>